name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, many years ago, a young Portuguese man traveled to India to seek his fortune. A few years later, he returned to Europe laden with great wealth. When he returned, the man decided to play a trick on his relations. Disguised in old clothes, he visited his cousin Peter, claiming relationship and asking for accommodation. Not recognizing the rich man, the cousin refused lodging and told him to leave. Wearing his disguise, the wealthy Portuguese man visited three of his former friends. His poverty-stricken appearance caused them to send him away. Little did they know that under those tattered garments, a wealthy man was concealed. Soon afterwards, he went back to his ships, dressed in costly attire, and followed by a multitude of servants, purchased a magnificent estate in the very heart of the city. The people of the town were amazed at his great wealth and lordly retinue. How disappointed were his so-called friends who had refused to offer aid. They said, had we known this before, we would have acted differently. This story is analogous to what takes place between many Catholics and our Lord, who is hidden in the Blessed Sacrament. Jesus Christ is silently enclosed in the tabernacle, his humble home, where he remains concealed under the appearances of bread and wine. Only on very rare occasions has Christ worked Eucharistic miracles, where he displays his heavenly brightness, power, and glory. Like the rich man in the story, our Lord will come again in glory at our judgment, at the end of the world, and at the general judgment. While billions of others are lost in spiritual darkness, Almighty God has blessed us with the special graces of the true faith and the real presence of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Recently, I observed a first grader genuflecting before going into her pew. Since the little girl is preparing for First Holy Communion, the truths of the faith have been deeply impressed upon her soul. She looked toward the tabernacle, genuflected very reverently, and genuflected very reverently because she really believes that Jesus is present in the tabernacle. My dear and beloved in Christ, we must never become complacent. Tepidity or lukewarmness is a serious spiritual disease. Our faith can erode slowly and almost imperceptibly, causing us to show little reverence in the church. Sadly, unless we have a strong faith and make an effort, our sign of the cross, genuflection, attendance at Mass and reception of Holy Communion can become mere routine. When visiting famous cathedrals and churches throughout the world, I've seen as apostates of the Vatican II Church show a reverence by reading a newspaper or sleeping in the pew, riding a bike in the church, standing around the table, playing the guitar in church, etc. These people show little or no reverence because their faith has been destroyed by modernism and the new mass they attend is invalid. Sadly, many traditional Catholics have little practical faith. This is shown by their reverent behavior in church. They see in the Holy Eucharist nothing but a little white host, and their thoughts penetrate no farther. However, if they only reflected on what faith teaches, that under the appearances of bread and wine, our Lord conceals his heavenly splendor and glory. How different would be their deportment. My dear and beloved in Christ, when we are in church, our exterior deportment reflects the disposition of our soul. When Catholics express little or no interior devotion and little exterior modesty in the church, this means that either they do not believe that God is present here or their faith is cold and dead. Who can truly believe that Christ is present in the Holy Eucharist and fail to show proper reverence? If a person believes the truth with a lively faith, his behavior in church will correspond with his belief. 
Our Lord said, my house is a house of prayer. If we have this conviction in our heart, it will be expressed by our reverence, modest attire, reflective silence, and spirit of prayer. If we're generally casual and carefree in our daily routines, we need to put off the spirit of the world and its ways when we're in the house of God. Why must we display reverent deportment in church? Because the words of the Son of God assure us of the reality of the divine presence in the Blessed Sacrament. A dogma of our faith assures us that we are truly in the presence of Almighty God. Therefore, we should be respectful and reverent, honoring our Lord, who has so greatly humbled himself for love of us. Our norms of conduct in church today should be typical of those displayed by parishioners long before Vatican II. Sadly, people in our society rarely dress with dignity. When viewing old TV game shows or sporting events, have you ever noticed how well-dressed were the audiences and the fans in those days? They're going to the World Series or the Super Bowl or something. They're watching the game. And their men wore hats, suits, and ties. Women wore hats, gloves, and nice dresses. Proper and respectful attire has all but vanished in our day. My dearly beloved in Christ, we should begin to put God first in our lives by, by wearing our Sunday best to church. For Sunday mass, tennis shoes, jeans, and t-shirts are not appropriate for men and boys. Women and girls wear a veil, hat, or head covering as an expression of their love for God. They should not wear pants, mini skirts, sleeveless, sheer and low-cut blouses, and tight, indecent clothing. Since we must be on time for important things like school and work, we should also be on time when we come to church because it carries far more importance for our immortal soul. We should resolve to always be on time for Mass and allow for unforeseen circumstances such as heavy traffic. People are often late due to poor planning, laxity, or indifference. When we enter the church, we should reverently genuflect all the way down on our right knee and bless ourselves with holy water. We again genuflect when we reach our pew. Since the church is a house of prayer, we should observe respectful silence. Catholics are encouraged to arrive early so they can prepare for the holy sacrifice of the Mass by participating in the recitation of the rosary or by going to confession. When Mass begins, we should follow the prayers recited by the priest by using our missal or prayer book. We may also recite the rosary or other traditional prayers. Since Pope Pius XII permitted the faithful to respond to some of the prayers of the priest together with the altar boys, you may do so. We know the choir does that during a high mass. However, the faithful do not say amen when they receive Holy Communion. My dearly beloved in Christ, if you're kneeling in the front rows and will be receiving Holy Communion, please rise and go to the communion rail when the server walks to the credence table to get the paten. So he'll come and get this, and that means it's time for communion. If the choir sings during the Mass, please wait until they come up and then proceed. In this way, the faithful are prepared to receive Holy Communion and don't have to rush to the communion rail at the last moment. I remember one time, this was at a confirmation in a different state, and um, the children in the confirmandi were kneeling in the pews, and it was time to come to the communion rail, and nobody moved. And then... Uh, and then somebody kind of made a move, and then it was everybody was cautious. And then somebody ran up there, and it, so for Holy Communion, we just want to do it in an orderly way. If you're still in the center aisle during before Holy Communion has been distributed, then please kneel if you're able. As an act of charity, do not disturb others during Mass. Parents with very small children who can be disruptive. Should, should, sit, should sit in the back pews. If crying is loud and disruptive and continues after making quick, reasonable attempts to keep them quiet, 
please take children outside. When children are three or older, they're encouraged to move closer or sit near the aisle so they can see what's going on. I've noticed that children preparing for First Holy Communion are capable of sitting by themselves in a front pew and behaving well because they're not bothered by siblings. It's recommended that children use the restroom before Mass. If this habit is established, they will not have to go during Mass nor be seen wandering outside. When parents daily recite family prayers together with their children in the home, they also train them to be well-behaved in church. Discipline begins at home. If children do not obey you there, you can hardly expect them to behave well in church. In order to fulfill our obligation of attending the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation, we must be present for the three principal parts, offertory, consecration, and the priest's communion. If a person willfully misses any of these essential parts without an urgent reason, he has missed Mass. After receiving Holy Communion, children and adults should not turn to look around or at others, but should rather fold their hands and make a proper thanksgiving by speaking to our Lord in their own words and or by reading prayers from their missal. Remember, parents, your piety is the best example for them. What they see you do, they will mimic. Sometimes I've noticed how very small children who have not yet made their first Holy Communion will open their mouths to receive Holy Communion like they see their parents doing. At what age should children be taught about the Mass and the Blessed Sacrament? Parents should instruct their children even before they've reached the age of reason. One mother said to her little child, The church is the house of God. Jesus, who loves you so much, is behind the beautiful golden door that you see before you. Tell Jesus how much you love him. Throw him a kiss. Promise him that you'll be a good child so that he will be pleased. When parents with faith and love speak similar words to their small children, they make a strong impression. When your children have reached the age of reason, remind them that the church is a very special place because our Lord dwells there day after day, surrounded by adoring angels. Teach your children about the Mass and the great mystery which takes place in it. For example, you can say, the same Jesus who for love of you was born in a stable and died upon the cross descends from heaven at the consecration of the Mass. As a priest bows over the bread and wine and recites the sacred words, the great miracle occurs. Our Lord is truly present with us in the Holy Eucharist, just as he was with his apostles and the people of Palestine long ago, and as he is in heaven today. My dearly beloved in Christ, after you You've explained the Mass to your children. Inspire in them a love for Jesus and a yearning to visit him in his house and receive him. Since our Lord has an inexpressible love for us and wants to be near us, tell them about the happiness experienced by those who receive him in Holy Communion. After their first Holy Communion, tell them this is a first step toward their growth in union with Christ. If you foster their devotion and give good example, their love for God will grow deeper and more tender. In closing, when Mass is over, do not engage in conversation until you're outside the church. It's necessary that everyone cooperate to create a prayerful atmosphere during the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Although silence is generally observed in church if it is necessary to speak. For example, to explain the Mass to your children, a newcomer or friend, or for a serious reason, please whisper. These guidelines have been established to help you benefit from the extraordinary graces obtained by attending the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass and by receiving our Lord in Holy Communion. You'll get out of the Mass 
what you put into it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.